What it do, flight crew? FTC. Flight team, stand up! It's July. What a time to be alive. Why you lie? It's July. We got the main Jimmy High Roller. And I think this vid is specifically about this one guy. I believe he's like 7 4 7 5 ball player, man. He's been like messing with FTC since like 2020. If you guys kind of be peeping, um, he was commenting like a couple times on the vids, you know what I'm saying? And he was just like, bro, I'm gonna be the, you know, flight, I'm gonna be, uh, you know what I'm saying, number one ball player, man. And then, like, here we is, man, like, right up here in Jimmy High Roller making headlines, man. You know what I'm saying? Love to see it, bro. You know what I'm saying? So let's see what my man High Roller's talking about up in this thing. Let's check it out. Is a once in a lifetime type of talent. I think, because the thumbnail showed him, maybe it could be uh, clickbait for something else. Uh, but y'all, uh, his name was like Victor. I forgot how to say his last name. But it's good to see him, man. People don't talk about him like. He's a on the rise. Star. They start the conversation with future MVP. That's some pretty high praise for an 18 year old who hadn't even played an NBA game yet. That LeBron hype was a different, different thing, not though. About LeBron. I think All since then, they, that's when they the made high school draft prospects. Um, Victor Webb players hype. A player yeah, who scouts are saying might just be the best NBA prospect of all time. Wow. Except there's just one thing scouts are forgetting. What? The man high roller. Today's video is sponsored All right. Keeps. Congrats on the sponsor, buddy. We did not come here to see that. All right. Question. Off the top of your head, who is the best player in NBA history? Steph Curry. Three inches or taller. Oh, Yao seven for three. Oh, 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 no. We're not having this conversation. It's, it's Yao Ming for Shirley. I always feel like Yao Ming is so underappreciated as a big man because he had a very short time in the NBA. About, what, four to five years you're talking about of you getting to enjoy Yao Ming in his prime. If you're talking about anybody over seven foot three, mind you, this is seven foot three. Shaq is seven two and under. Seven foot three and up. I'm going with Yao Ming every single time. Big Yao Ming fan over here. I don't understand why people forget about Yao Ming. I actually praise the uh, props to Jimmy Howard for putting him in the highlight reel and having him, you know what I'm saying, thought about. But bruh, like people be trying to bring up like Hakeem, like Patrick Chewing, like bro, Yao Ming. Healthy Yao Ming, bro. Like, he's leading you to the championship. Just throw the ball out, down to the paint. I'm talking about in the early 2000s. I witnessed the dominance of the man Yao Ming. Come on. Rick Smiths, maybe Arvidas Sabonis. I'm sure a few names come to mind, but only a few. And that's because even in a league, I didn't know Sabonis had a, uh, that was his, uh, dad? Many players this tall. In fact, from the league right now, 75 okay. year history, the there have players only been 26 players who were seven feet, three inches or taller. Wow. Okay. Dang, what happened to this dude, uh, the George Mershon dude? He said it was seven. They said it was seven seven. It looks like he's the tallest out of all. I remember the Junis on the Cavs. This is crazy. So seven three and taller. Boob and marijuana Vic made the list. Of those twenty six players, only three of them are currently in the NBA, and wow. only three others made the Basketball Hall of Fame. Really? See, despite size and length being one of the most valuable assets in the game of basketball, there is such thing as being too tall for the game. No, it isn't. At what point no. does a player have too much height? <gasps> well, if history he tells us anything, it's that the threshold is about 7'1". I know, it's a rather specific number. But time and time again, we are shown that anyone above 7'1 is bound to have significant, if not career-ending injuries and health issues due to their incredible size. It sucks, but it's sometimes true. Players, really, only about seven of them went on to have notable careers. And of those seven players, five of them either missed entire seasons due to injuries or had to retire due to injuries. You'd actually have a hard time finding more than a few players who were I was so heartbroken to hear Yao Ming retire too, man. You seven just don't gotta be yeah, the beat it, I understand. Injuries. There seems Yao Ming, honestly, man, I'm sometimes taking Yao over Shaq, bro. Like limit to come how on. a player can be before their size quickly becomes a debilitating Ooh. detriment. And I say all of this for oh, one heartbroken. Reason. No this kid. Seven foot three inch, eighteen Victor. year old Victor Wembenyama. A player that possesses uh, all the physical tools and Wimbledon. skills to be a once-in-a-generation talent. Let's but go, Victor. Just be too tall for his own good. Victor the is FTC. That's crazy. The best NBA prospects. We gonna see a lot of y'all FTC brothers and sisters making it to the pros. Reach, 
Y'all better give me them jerseys, though. That's all I asked for. Over the last few decades, we've witnessed some of the all-time greatest NBA prospects get drafted. The kind of talent that has teams scrambling to lose as many games as possible to get. Shaq in 1992, Tim Duncan in 1997, LeBron James in 03, and Anthony Davis in 2012. With talents of this caliber, there's never really any debates as to who's going number one overall. In fact, in some cases, if these prospects were available for the draft sooner, they would have gone first overall before they were even eligible. Ron wow. Artest is on record saying LeBron could have played in the NBA by the time he was just 15 years and old. And this is a convo that I actually just remembered I wanted to have. Bro, so I was last, when I, my barb was telling me that I don't know where I see, where, where I remember he said he's seen it from, but apparently like, now don't quote me this because like, this is apparently what he said, but it doesn't sound like it was real. You know what I'm saying or true. Apparently, like the league is trying to work on letting players, like in the in, in the NBA, like in America at least, like be in the league by like 14, 15 years old, like similar to how it is like in in soccer nationally. You know, like you know Ronaldo, he won his first championship, or Messi, you know, one of those two won their first championship when it was like sixteen. You know what I'm saying? So it'll be so great, bro. I honestly feel like there's a couple of players that could really play, like not even a couple, just like in the future and everything like that, like. You know, players like Mikey Williams, bro, Bronny, like, I feel like they can legitimately have been in the NBA, like, right this second. Like, say whatever you want to say. They have the skill set. They have the talent. And they have the fundamentals. All they really needed to probably do was just bulk up, like, 10, 15 more pounds. You know what I'm saying? I don't see why the NBA, like, wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, you're taking away the education and things like that. But, bro, if you can play, you can play. Bro, screw education, bro. You can always learn something on YouTube. Like, if you have the talent, like, why risk staying longer in the league in, like, high school and in college? And you can potentially get an injury or potentially sometimes, you know what I'm saying? I feel like which is another rare thing that, uh, you know, athletes and pro people don't look at and take account nowadays. Burnout is definitely possible, bro, especially if you're, like, you know, if you're all hyped up since, like, middle school, and then by the time you get to your senior year, you just like, oh, man, I haven't even been getting paid for anything yet. You know what I'm saying? Now they just change the rules. But imagine players, like, beforehand, they just changed it, like, a year or two ago. You know what I'm saying? You're not even getting paid for all that. You had to take most of the stuff under the table. You know what I'm saying? Looking over your shoulder and stuff like that and getting all this hype and you haven't, you know, like, getting any guaranteed contract. And by the time, sometimes I feel like players be getting burnt out, bro. I feel like that's a, a very underrated thing. So I feel like if somebody has that talent, you know what I'm saying, let them be in a league at 14 and 15 years old so that way they're already in there and then you also that literally leaves the excuse off the table for somebody like if they're a bust that means they're gonna be a bust and if they're not they're not you know what i'm saying they have so much time on their hands man that's what i feel like bro they should i feel like the age the age 14 if you are ranked in the top 10 nationally somewhere in any category you should be able to you know what i'm saying be eligible for the draft bro and if you get picked you get picked like why i sit there Two, three more years in high school, you know what I'm saying? Potentially get burned out. Not even get burned out. You get in, tr you know what I'm saying? You get in, in, in trouble, legal trouble stuff. You know what I'm saying? God forbid. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna have personal problems come up. Like, come on. It's only it only makes sense, you guys. It's only right. I understand education plays a factor, age, but it's only can take you so far. There are four or five players in the NBA that I wouldn't trade to get LeBron right now. This was back in 2002 when LeBron was a 17 year old high school junior. Of course, not all ultra elite NBA prospects are ready to make the jump right away. A few years ago, Marvin Bagley was far and away the best recruit in the class of 2018. So to expedite his journey to the NBA, he reclassified to the class of 2017 and was still the number one recruit in the country. But Ooh. despite his glare- I'm not even gonna lie to you, I've never heard of this dude. ...talents and NBA readiness at- I know everybody on the news damn near young age he has yet to make a real impact at the nba level wow because no matter how incredible a young prospect is in the world of sports there is no such thing as a guarantee exactly but and sometimes even going right back to what i was talking about like some players like are not meant to just come out and just be young and just come into the league and everything and they need that high school extra experience they need that college experience or another year or two you know what i'm saying so it, it just depends you know, and I also feel like, what do you guys think about this? Like a rule, maybe, but let's say a player gets to the league and they declare for the draft, like after high school and the first two years in the league, they're averaging like five points per game, less than that. You know what I'm saying? Not getting clocked like that at all. 
do you think they should be able to like kind of reverse and go back to the college that they was recruited to go into and, and be able to like let's say if they had like Duke, Kentucky and all the big name colleges, all the offers and everything. And those offers can be, you know, there for like up to maybe three to four years, you know what I'm saying? Like on some stuff like that. I feel like they should have the chance to maybe go back to college. You can get an education and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? Experience a college basketball experience and then come right back, you know what I'm saying, like mold your whole uh basketball skill and everything come right back fresh and, and you know what i'm saying your stock rises even more but rarely maybe there's a bro listen to flight reacts man along and i can be the president of basketball status. come on the 2023 nba draft will feature one of these generational prospects in victor Wembanyama. wait wait, wait. Victor what, what year is victor coming nearly reaches that unattainable status the 2023 nba draft year. generational prospects and Victor Wembanyama. Wow. Victor has been in the spotlight for To the Thunder? Months. What? That's not going to be fair. Damn. And not even 24 hours after the 2022 NBA draft, attention already began to shift to next year's draft and the ultimate prize. Hey, the man, I'm mad. Vic bro, Victor and, Gr and, and, and Chet. <laughs> I was about to say Gret. Chet. By now, that would be such a NBA 2K mod PC glitch. You know what I was saying when you guys when it was like those 2Ks from I'm pretty sure you can still do them now where you can make your player like 60 foot six and bro imagine Shet and Victor on the same team and then oh man I ain't gonna lie you put Victor with the Thunder right this second they're a second round team. Say what you want. They don't got the strain. They don't got all that, this and that. Just a height advantage alone, that's a second round team. That's really scary. I really think these these next generational players that are coming into the league, they're literally going to be like seven foot two, like demi demi gods, like and up. I think the next generation, like outside of this three point, like, you know what I'm saying, like huge side that that's going on. The next generation of players is going to be like the victors, like, you know what I'm saying? Like in the Shets and everything, you know, that players just going to be monster seven foot three. Like the Giants are going to be taking over 2023 and up. The I'm already calling it. stands out is his absurd height and length. Seven feet, three inches tall with a seven like, come foot, on. ten inch wing. This ain't even fair, so bro. <laughs> six foot four inch, 2022 oh, that's the Ivy dude. Fifth Ivy. Pick, you know. Here's seven foot one inch. I hope his injury is doing good, man. And, uh, hope he can get better. Here. Is Victor Wembanyama? Wow. Chet looked like an under. Bro, I, bro, I don't even think the Victor dude's not even. Bro, he got to be like seven four high key. You know what? I feel like the NBA, like in the last like ten years, they've been hating on like players' heights. Like how how is Kevin Durant like? Sometimes I be seeing he's six nine. Like how did he lose height? He went from six eleven to six nine, bro. Like, I feel like the NBA be hating their height. Like, they be just downgrading your size. But this Victor dude looks like he's about 7'4 and a half. This is crazy. Size shooting he's making Shet look like this. You know what I'm saying? Like a little one. Isn't 7'3. He's actually closer to 7'5. I just That's said that. that! This is confirming NBA be hating on heights. But you see this guy right here? This Who's is this? Zach Eady. Zach's official Zach. listed height is 7'4. And Victor is a giant. But. So you're saying the NBA is literally trying to block this man's success. They have him listed at 7-3 in the NBA a scouting report. And you have this guy right here. I honestly never heard of him. No disrespect. He is sitting at 7-4. And he's still short. Bro, this Victor dude is 7 six. I think Victor is a more athletic Yao Ming coming to the league. But his incredible stature isn't nearly what makes him. Now I see why you guys really wanted me to react to this, man. This is crazy. It was on a it was on a recommended little yesterday. We was reacting to the Curry thing. I have plans on reacting to it. Visually startling. Just taking a chance to be busy. Despite being a skyscraper, he can take defenders off the dribble with an explosive first step or use an arsenal of moves to create separation in ISO situations. The kid is seven three and can create shots for himself. Anywhere on the Crazy, man. Similar to Kevin Durant, his high release on his jump shots makes them virtually unguardable. Although he's not nearly the outside shooter Durant is. But he does have an inside game far beyond his years, where he uses a variety of combinations involving spin moves, pump fakes, and fadeaways, which keeps the defense in a constant state of gambling. Yeah, like he got game for game, sure, bro. Choose your poison. 
Ultimately, at the moment, his strengths are in the open floor and on defense. With his speed, quick reaction, and size, Victor is virtually an automatic bucket in transition. He has the situational awareness and athleticism to create transition opportunities out of thin air. And on defense, he already possesses world-class instincts and timing, and his insane length allows him to seemingly be in two places on the court at once. However, Victor, just like every other prospect that came before him, does have his weaknesses. But all of these weaknesses are things that, with the right development, can be solved. His slim frame, his shoddy decision making at times, gambling on defense and relying on his length to make up for it, the usual weaknesses of most young mega talents. But none of that matters, because Victor isn't just the presumable number one overall pick in the 2023 NBA draft. He's the draft pick of the decade. According to SP Nation's they're saying the a draft pick of the decade. Big, we gotta be paying attention to him. Paying attention to him. Comfortable with the ball in his um, and the scouting reports and all. One anonymous NBA scout said, Bro, and it's crazy. He's skinny as heck, too. Still, he's gonna obviously get muscle by that time. More muscle. Another NBA scout said, When you see something you've never seen before, it can feel like your eyes are playing tricks on you. And many other scouts shared this same opinion, most of them struggling to even come up with an appropriate comp for Wimbenyama. Since, quite frankly, I like his name too. Been a player Wimbledon. Like in the history of the NBA. Last summer, Victor faced off against Chet. Anybody Oliver know his um his race like ethnicity? Final. And despite Victor being a year younger than Chet, one NBA scout said, "Never have I seen Chet Holmgren overshadowed physically like he was last year. Whenever the two met, just off of sheer potential, Victor is one of the most sought-after prospects we've ever seen. Mm. But there's just one small catch these scouts are missing." Actually, it's one massive seven foot three inch catch. Oh my Victor's gosh. Victor's too damn tall. As we previously touched on, the history of extremely tall Bro, the wingspan is great insane. is very, very short. No matter how talented a freakishly tall player is, no matter how enticing their physical tools are, at a certain point, all that height will eventually become a detriment to their game and their longevity. Mm. This trend I don't think so with them. ultra big men has become so prevalent that <laughs> <laughs> exception, it's practically the rule. Believe it or not, there are only five active NBA players who are taller than seven feet. And of these five Taco players, fall. only three of them are taller than hey seven feet. Hey man, 2K two. made his card crazy. Easily we got one more last my of team of the year attempt though. I can't end off like that last one who is the last player taller than 7-1 and made a real impact in the nba stop don't even bother trying to come up with an answer it's hey. yao ming thank you all-star caliber season jimmy the knowledgeable high old, roller which means that this century has featured two two players seven feet two inches or taller who played at an elite level and both of them have had their careers derailed due to injuries mm. it's virtually inevitable since the 2000 NBA draft, here are the percentages of games missed from lottery picks sorted by height. Throughout these three height ranges, there seems to be no correlating factor between height and injury. Generally speaking, players ranging from below 6 feet all the way up to 6'11 experience injuries at a very similar frequency. But lottery picks from 7 feet to 7'1 have missed 26.2% of all their potential NBA games. Wow. This is a staggering amount. Now, I would add another height range of 7 to and above, but there just hasn't been enough NBA prospects in that height range. The last time a player that tall was selected with the lottery pick in the NBA draft was Chris Stapps Porzingis in 2015. Before Chris Stapps, you have to go back to 2009 when the Memphis Grizzlies drafted 7 foot 3 inch Hashim Oh Tampa with no. Overall pick. Damn, spot, man, that sucks, man. Five I remember him in college. Three, low key a bust. I remember what you know about Johnny Flynn. That sucks, bro. The Wolves be going out sad sometimes. Bro, they had two picks, bro. I remember Johnny Flynn from Syracuse, man. Damn, I hope they doing well, though. You know what I'm saying? Jordan Hill was another one. Ugh, man. And it looked at Steph, Chef, look at Curry, man. Number one NBA player of all time went lucky seven. Warriors got lucky. DeMar DeRozan. DeMar! Relatively healthy. Raptors got lucky. Five seasons bouncing around to numerous teams and finished his career with averages of just two points and two points on ten minutes per game. Nah, man, that's but crazy. Seven foot not, three and up. to beat actually holds an NBA record. Really? For the tallest and highest drafted player to ever be sent down to the D-League. I swear I'm not making that up. That's... 
Bro, I would hate waking up in the morning, dog. Like, walking outside, like, and knowing that. Like, man. Bro, and honestly, I just feel like that just comes from just not having work ethic, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Like, in that, in that time, too, like, I feel like 2010 to, like, 2015 was, like, it was a I always say, like, it was, like, a boring, sad time in the NBA. You had the lockout situation happen. You know what I'm saying? And then you just, like, I just feel like there was just not a lot of talent. So there was just a lot of room for just a lot of players to just, like, like be taken off. And then you also had another bus, Anthony uh, Bennett, with the, uh, the with the Cavs at that time, which was crazy. Man. It's a real fact. And to find the next absurdly tall lottery pick, you but have hey, to go all the way Sheen is banking, though. You know what I'm saying? He, he made, like, what, like, five, ten plus million each of those seasons? So we set for life regardless. Pick. Say whatever you want about so him. My <laughs> estimation is the greatest player over seven feet, two inches in NBA history. To this day, Yao Ming is criminally underrated. The Thank you. The only thing bigger than he was were the standards put upon him coming into the NBA. And he lived up to that standard. But unfortunately, the height that made him an unstoppable force on the courts was also the cause of his retirement mm. smack dab in the middle of his prime at the age of 30. Finding Sucks, a young, bro. talented player with this much size is a feat in its own right. Finding a young player with this much size with the expectation that he has a long and healthy career would be nothing short of a miracle. To say the odds are stacked against this young man would be an understatement. We've just rarely seen any player pull it off. But that's the thing. Victor isn't like any other player. He can protect the paint like Gobert, create offense like Porzingis, run the floor like Giannis, and pass like Arvidas. All in one package. Wow. With a talent like this, teams will gladly take all the risk for a shot at the ultimate reward. If he can stay healthy, Wembenyama has the opportunity and the skills to be a player unlike anything the NBA has ever seen. So with that being said, let the Victor Wembenyama sweepstakes begin. <laughs> hey, man. Congrats, man. And Victor, dude, man. You mess, mess with us. You know what I'm saying? FTC, brothers and sisters, man. I remember since like 2020 pandemic, man. Glad to see, you know what I'm saying, good people. You know what I'm saying? On the rise, man. As you man, coming up with like stretch next, man. On the road to five.